Father, Holy Father, in Jesus' name, please bless. Hi everybody, this is Angelo Quinones and you reach I Am Ministries. I Am Ministries is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's Holy and as far as the Bible. And I'm keeping my voice down a little bit, far be it from me, <laughs> because of my baby. She's a special child and she's sleeping, so I don't want to wake her up. I'm doing this uh, Bible study on the Trinity at home. All right, so um, let's get at it. Now, you know the famous verses of the Trinity. Okay, there's a mention of word three over here, shalosh in Hebrew, or tris or thrice or tres in, in Greek, in the Greek Septuagint, the, the so-called Greek Bible. But that's revealed later in chapter 18, and we already went through that chapter and um, touched the outer hem of the garment of it and came up with the doctrine of the Trinity that perhaps the Trinity did visit Abraham. Okay, Shalosh is there for three, and the Tetragrammaton appears no less than three than uh, ten times actually in that in that chapter. Let's read this from the NIV. Okay, let's check this out. Now we're going to be looking at uh, let me see uh, five verses of scripture that has to do with the Trinity. Now before we begin, let's just tackle right away. Okay the misuse of um, what came up in the what the 16th or 15th century whatever the case may be the plurality of majesty that has nothing to do with these texts that was incorporated by the enemies of the trinity okay uh you know way after moshe wrote uh the hebrew um and we're going to be seeing that okay so we're going to get through these verses, knowing that the plurality of majesty has nothing to do with the Trinity. There's no such thing as the plurality of majesty. There's no such thing. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses use that as a golden parachute, just like they use three other parachutes when they get into trouble. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 28. Uh, it matters when it matters. That's number two. Number three, uh, well, oh yeah, you know, Jesus has a God. You know, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. Those are the golden parachutes that they use. And the plurality of majesty is another golden parachute that they use, especially when, you know, being defeated by the text of Scripture recorded here for the Trinity. You understand what I mean? So let's get at it. We're going to look at the Hebrew. We're going to look at it. And so let's just say there. We're going to look at all the forms. And then we're going to look at the Greek Septuagint, okay, in our next study of the Lord. Well, we shall do this and that. Now let's read this from the NIV. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, in the Greek Septuagint, it says, in arche, epoiasin, that's in the Aramaic tense, the augment there, the epsilon is the augment. We're going to look at that. And then uh, the sigma and epsilon actually is a, is a third person, third person uh, form. Uh, used is a, a regular thing found in uh, in uh, the Aris tense there, when the Aris tense uh, uh, has time, you know, involved in it. Uh, so we're gonna check that out. But Enarche epoies in hate as tan uranan kaitain gain is the is the complete verse there in the Greek Septuagint. Uh, the the Hebrew here, okay. Now um, let's turn it here. Let me see if this is the Hebrew. In the beginning, the Hebrew here is Bereshit Bara Elohim. Bara Elohim. Okay. Now, Bereshit means in beginning. It's the same prepositional phrase found and recorded okay, in the Hebrew New Testament. Uh, uh, and when, they're, when, when, when you see, you know, the famous phrase from John 1.1, 1, 1, okay, all right, in the beginning, uh, and arche, and arche, right in Greek, but bereshit, bereshit is there, but it doesn't say bereshit bara uh, Elohim hadabar. In the beginning, God created the what? The bar means what in Hebrew? You understand what I'm saying? It doesn't say that. It says it goes on to say in the beginning was the word haya hadabar. Very uh, very different than this. It doesn't say haya hadabar here. You know, uh, uh, or whatever the case may be, or uh, no, no, but uh, um, it doesn't say um, in uh, John one one, 
uh, you know, and uh, Behrashid Bara. <laughs> Sorry to spit out, guys. Uh, Behrashid Bara, Elohim Hadabar, in John 1 1. Okay, this is different. It says over here, Behrashid Bara Elohim. Now, as this be, there's a preposition over there, be, or whatever you want to, however you want to pronounce it. Then you have the resh, or the r, right in, right underneath the i there. It's like an opposite side, side looking r. Then that, you have said a, okay, so re. And then you have a uh, aleph there, underneath the two ends. And then you have a sheen, or a shin, underneath the g, right? It looks like a w, but it's not. It's an sh because of the upper position dot. Uh, and then um, you have a sego underneath that, right? No, no, you have a, a Hidek I class underneath that. Sorry about that. That's a little dot underneath a consonant. When you see that, you're most like mostly looking, most likely looking at an I class, okay? Hidek uh, sheet, and then you have the the yod. Um, this is Aramaic. This is not Hebrew. We call it Hebrew, but it's not actually. Uh, this is Aramaic script. Everybody knows that by now. Yod. Um, it's acting like a vowel there, along with the with the little dot to make an e sound, and then there's a tau there, last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and that has different pronunciations. But we're gonna make it a t sound, and bereshit. Now it says over here created, and that's bara, bara, bait with the hardening dogish, and the little tiny dot in the belly of the b there. In Hebrew, the B sounding letter in Hebrew, right? You have created. I'm underneath the ED and created. Okay. That's a B in Hebrew. Okay. Bet. It could be a V also. Okay. And it's hard. It has a dot in the middle of it. So it's making it hard. Then it has a T looking thingy underneath it. That's an A class, like in the word father. Don't make Hebrew so hard. What's hard for us non Jewish people is that, you know, we don't know how to pronounce it as, as, as good as. The Jewish people do, but I don't expect them to pronounce my Spanish in a perfect way either. So it goes both ways. You understand what I'm saying? Or English, by the way, because I'm a native-born uh, American, meaning, you know, I was born in America. I'm, I'm Spanish. So anyway, ba, and then you have the resh, the r, uh, opposite side looking r, in Hebrew underneath the t and created, and then another a class, uh, kametz, kametz. So that's uh, ra, and then the aleph. Is uh, silent there, so bara means cre means created. Not to be confused with basar, which means uh, flesh. Okay, found and recorded in in Job chapter nineteen. And then we have Elohim here, Elohim. Elohim is right under the word for God in English, and so you have hatef segol underneath the aleph. Okay, so aleph looks like an X looking letter. That X looking letter, okay, which is not an X, it's a sign, one of the two silent letters in Hebrew, the other one's peculiar, I N, uh, is a designation for a Greek manuscript. We all know it, Sinaiticus or Sinaiticus, or Sinaiticus, you understand? <laughs> so that's the only Hebrew letter that designates a, a Greek manuscript of, of the New Testament. And so you have that, so you have E, eh, and then you have the Lamed, which is a long letter, especially on the upper uh, portion. And that's right under the, the letter G for God, and, and, and O, by the way. And that's a dot right next to it on the upper left-hand corner. That's an O class. So we just saw a, a dot on the bottom of a, of a consonant. That's an I class, a, a dot above, uh, you know, a, a letter to the, to the, to the left-hand side. It mostly, mostly will be looking, most likely will be looking at an O class if you see that. You have to be careful, though. There's other dots. And there's an H here. That's a hey with the I class underneath it, okay, and the accent marker. Accent markers to the uh, left-hand side and the dot, the I class, is right underneath the, the hey to the uh, right-hand side. And I already said that the yod uh, can can be a vowel, and it's doing that here. And you got final mem to calf off the what? That's, there are two M styles, or there are two styles for the M sounding letter in Hebrew. One that could go anywhere except for the last uh, letter in a Hebrew word. And this can only be the last letter, okay, in a, in a Hebrew word, final mem. And you see it in, in words like susim, 
okay, which means horses, cherubim, seraphim, those angel, angel, angel classes in the plural, panim, which means faces of persons or whatever the case may be, echadim, which means few, and on and on it goes. So, this is telling you right off the bat that there is, there, there is a plurality within the Godhead. It's not saying there's, there's many gods, okay? It's not saying that. It's not saying that he's 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 more than one uh, being, but he there's, there's there's something to them. There's something plural about the nature of God. You, it's just not revealed here right away. You have to see the number, and you see it recorded in the word shalosh, which means three in Genesis chapter eighteen, and we covered that all across the board already around verse two or three. And see what I'm saying? All right. So this is verse one. And remember, this is the foundation of the Bible. You don't need God saying us all the time. You already have it in Genesis. You don't need to build a foundation twice if you have a house. Okay, You don't build a foundation again and again and again. When you build a house or a tower or whatever the case may be, a skyscraper, you build a foundation one time. After that, you build upon it. Okay, And you can do whatever you want. I mean, you can, you can illustrate whatever you want in that house by the house but the foundation is just like the apostles and the prophets jesus christ himself being the chief cornerstone well you don't need another messiah to be the foundation you don't need other apostles to be you know built upon christ the way that they were in the same way the trinity doesn't have to be okay explain again and again and again and again in the same way it just needs to be what needs to be addressed is how many persons, except for the us, 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 us is fine, but how many persons is is has to do with the us. That's what's revealed. And who are they? And what do they do? And who sent who? Okay, you understand? That needs to be said. Why do you, you know, because if it wasn't like that, then Jehovah's Witnesses, they're always witching one and complaining anyway about everything, you know. If it, if it said us all across the board from Genesis to Revelation, so what? They still be, they'll say, oh, it just says us. What about, um, you know, for example, if it wasn't there, I'm saying, for example, why doesn't it say in the Bible, uh, go baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? They'll say that. They would have said that if it wasn't there. They have it, and then they sneeze at it, you know? Let's go to another script I recorded. Now, um... Let's go to chapter 1 and verse 26. You understand? Let me see what I have here. And those are my boards that I made in Corel Video Studio. You know, that's me over there. And uh, let me see if I can find it, though. Where's verse 26, though? That's 22. I don't want to skip. Okay, that's Isaiah. So that's Isaiah there. Let me see. Um, where's, I'm going to have to punch it up here in my phone because I don't see it there. I don't see that I took a picture of it though. I don't know. Maybe it just didn't come out. So let's switch this. Okay. To Genesis. You understand? Uh, wait for a second. Genesis chapter one. Oh, wait for a second. Wait. That's chapter two. So let's go all the way over here. The next verse that has to do about the Trinity is uh, verse 26 as we all know but we're looking at the constructions because we have we have to become experts in knowing this stuff just in case we're asked we don't want to be embarrassed or be ashamed okay you understand just like the Bible says so it's over here then God said okay now in 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 Greek it'll be probably Kai uh, Hathe As or Kai Apen Hathe As okay let us make man okay na ase adam adam means man in hebrew along with ish ish isha means woman by the way in, in hebrew ha isha means woman ha ish means the man but take the ha's out and you just have ish and isha you understand what i'm saying but anyway over here it says then god said let us make man mankind it says over here in our image in our image in our likeness it says now traditionally it says that there are four plural pronouns for god in the bible that's incorrect you have six of them not four you have four verses okay and you have three verses with one each but then you have this one that has three 
Okay, so you have three over here and one each found and recorded in uh, the other verses that we're going to be seeing. 322, 11, 7 of this book and Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. You understand? So you have six of them, not four. Sometimes in debates, people make mis you know they make <laughs> they make they make mistakes. I'm forgetting my English here in the Philippines. They make mistakes, and they say oh, they're, they're four, but they're, they're talking about there's four verses though. But there's six actual pronouns that are in the plural. You even see that in books sometimes. Four. It's not four. Six. Okay, six. Well, let's check it out again. Then God said, "Let us make man." Now, what is that? Well, in order to see that, we're gonna have to go. We're going to have to go to the Hebrew. Uh, that's, that, that's Isaiah. So let me just look at the pictures again in my phone. Okay, all right. So it's just it. Let me see here. Okay. Let me get it. That's uh, chapter 11. Uh, and so over here, like one, no, that's not the one I want yet. Now, let me see here. <clears throat> see if it's this side. Okay. All right. So over here, let us make man. Let us make man. All right. According to our now, this is, this is I think over here. For a minute in our like uh, image. Okay, right here, right here. This is it, guys. So this over here, God Elohim. Okay. Let us make. Now, he wasn't talking to the angels because the angels don't make things. He said they don't make they don't make creatures. And so he was, he was talking. Either the Trinity was speaking all at once, and so what? You have you have I mean you know, you have you know, the Bee Gees song all at the same time. Okay, they sang they sang at the same time. The Bee Gees. You got three right there. You know what I'm saying? Ah. <laughs> huh? And so you, you have people in the Bible saying, you know, uh, things at the same time, you know. The people at the cross were saying crucify and crucify, and they were all, uh, you know, uh, they were all talking in one accord. There are people talking at the same time, you know, no. so many places in the Bible. And outside of the Bible, you have people singing, you have people talking, you know. And then, like, uh, for example, uh, you, could be, you could be in your job, and... Um, and uh, two could get up the same at the same time. Let's go for lunch. And everybody could say, "Okay, let's go." Come on, man. You know, who you think he's dealing with? You understand what I'm saying? This is the kick. The church. We have answers for everything. You understand what I'm saying? This is the deal. It says over here, "Let us make." Now over here is not say. Now let us make whom? Not say Adam. Adam means man in Hebrew. Let's look at that first. It's all the way down there, recorded. Uh, and that's uh, just a deal. It's spelled out Aleph with the commits, okay, and Dalit, which is a D. It looks like the rest, so be careful with that, with the commits. And then uh, you have uh, final mem. So it's actually um, A D A M, and that's just the deal. Adam. So actually, let us make man is Adam. Not I say Adam. Not I say, let us make Adam man. You understand? says over here, let us make. Now, it's actually, ah, ah, nah, ah, say. Thank God they got rid of those, the, 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 that sound, ah. I mean, you know, it's just the deal. In modern Hebrew, they don't have no ah for A classes, you know. Everything is ah all across the board, like the comets, you understand what I'm saying? Over here, you have noon. Okay, I'm underneath the E in make, oh, over there uh, to the top. And that's an N in Hebrew. Looks like those, it's like, like the, old-fashioned telephone, right? Handle, you know, thing. That's an N in, in Hebrew. It's called Nun. N-U-N or N-O-O-N. You understand? And so that's just the deal. So um, so then you have a, it looks like a minus sign underneath it, like on a calculator. That's an A-class, like in the word hat in biblical Hebrew. And then after that, you have an I-N on right under the K in make, it looks like a Y. It's not a Y. That's a silent letter. It's peculiar. It, it, it can make it can make us. It, it does make a sound, but unlike the Aleph, that make, makes no sounds. But um, but it is peculiar. It's silent here. The sound is made by the bottom vowel class, uh, the, the uh, pathach. 
so uh, it's a hatef pathach, and uh, those two dots that look like a braille B, right? It's a uh, the horiz- um, uh, vertical uh, set of dots. Okay, that's that's uh, hatef, and then uh, the minus look minus sign looking thingy underneath it is an A class. So so far you got na a. And then you have a, a W looking letter, which is not a W. It's an S A. It can be an S H or an S, according to the upper, uh, according to the upper dot position. If it's on the right hand upper corner, it's a it's will be it'll be a S H. If it's on the left hand corner, like this is, it's an S, like in Sam. You understand? Underneath it, you have a, a, a upside down set of triangle, a, a upside down set of dots upside down triangle set of dots okay and that's an e class like in the word get like in that old uh, uh famous show get smart okay so so far you had na uh, se and then the h uh, or the hey in hebrew underneath basically the m and eh, it's sort of in the middle of the the us and the m uh, that's a hey that's found two times in the tetragrammaton that's an h that's silent Okay, that's a very important letter in Hebrew. In other words, it could, it could be an article like Hadabar in John 1 1, the what? It can be used in front of uh, Elohim, like, oh God, you don't need it though. And then it can make uh, a word feminine like Kola, like in uh, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1, you know, her voice or whatever the case may be, proving that it's not talking about logos at all, you know, wisdom. Call wisdom your 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 sister. I mean that's what that's found in the previous chapter, around verse fourteen of chapter seven. Come on, man, or Proverbs. It's just, it's, so the Son of God is a sister now. Come on, get lost. Let us make, okay. Achot is sister actually, in Hebrew, and Ach is actually brother, in Hebrew. All right, so let's go, okay, to. All right, um, chapter three now. Let's check it out. This is Isaiah. So this is it. This is chapter eleven. And that's just the deal. Let's look at chapter three, the famous uh, story found and recorded after the fall. And the Lord said, and the Lord said, so it'll be a, you know, a Kai A pen, uh, uh, Atheos, a Kurios, something like that. The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. Now, Satan was telling the truth. He said, if you eat of that tree, you're going to become like God. He wasn't lying. He wasn't lying. This is always truth in, in the devil's mouth, mixed with lies and stuff like that. It makes him so tricky. If I give you a dollar bill that looks looks all red and, and everything, you're not going to take it. You're going to take it if it looks like a dollar bill. You know what I'm saying? If it's yellow and everything, you're not going <laughs> to take that. It's Monopoly money. It's just a deal. But if it's mixed with truth and stuff like that, or if it's true all the way, and then he says a lie, like you will not die. See, the lie is it was in that you, will, you shall not die. That was a lie. But he mixed it with the truth that you're going to be like God, knowing good and evil. And then you hear in the Kirk in the church that he lied. And then, and then the, the old-fashioned thing that people laugh about at church all the time, you understand? That that Adam, Adam and Eve were, were passing the buck. They weren't passing the buck, man. I even saw that in Max McLean, you know, everybody laughing. The woman that you could me, you know, she gave me to eat it, you know, whatever. It's not like that, though. They were telling the truth. Now, when you come to the story of Cain, he didn't tell the truth, and that's why he got blasted by God. The vagabond, you know, the mark of the beast on his head. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody will find me. She'll kill me. I mean, come on. I don't know. He said, I don't know. If he said, if he said the same thing that Adam and Eve said, uh, the, you know, the person that you, the person that you uh, sent me, okay, then end quote there, I killed him. God would have accepted him if he would apologize for it and stuff like that. But he didn't. He lied. Adam said the truth. The woman that you gave me, she gave me, and I ate. That's what's so funny about that in the church. 
Oh, he was passing the buck. He wasn't passing the buck to Jose. He was telling him the truth. God knew it already, but he wanted to hear it. Bring him to him worse, says, you know, Jose chapter 14. You understand what I mean? Could be in chapter 10. And then Eve was saying the same thing. Well, you know, the 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 not the same thing, but you know, the serpent deceived me. She wasn't passing a buck to the to the serpent. She was saying the, she was saying the truth. They 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 didn't say no. I didn't eat of it, or, or something like that. They 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 gave Yahweh the words that he wanted to hear. They weren't passing the buck. It's just a disgrace when people laugh at that, man. All right. So anyway, let's go to um, let's go to um, this over here. And this is chapter three. Okay, let's see what it says. Like one, okay, fine. Of us is Mim Menu. Mim Menu. Now you have the um, it's spelled out like this. There's an M here, a Mem. Okay, now I already said there's two styles of the M. This M can be anywhere except for the last letter, so it's okay here. Mem. M E M Mem. So it's a, like a half a M, if you will, like that. Just think of it like that. It's under the word us, you understand? All the way to the bottom right hand corner. So you have that Mem and you have a dot. Now I already told you that what that was. What's the dot? Do you remember? The dot is called Hirek underneath a, a letter. And it's an I class. Just think of a dot you know, dotting the I's, crossing the T's. I mean, just think about just a dot underneath a letter, a consonant. In Hebrew, it has to be under. Okay, the dot is under. The I class is not found anywhere else. It's found underneath a consonant, the I class. So when you see a little tiny dot, that's an I. That's all. Say me. That's it. But this is a tricky thing. The second mem, remember that you read Hebrew from right to left, okay? Never from left to right unless you're breaking up the syllables. So uh, you read this like you read Aramaic, you know, from right to left. Not like Greek, English, Spanish, French, Greek. I think I said Greek already, but, you know, Latin. I mean, you know, all these languages. There's there's another mem here, but it has a dot in the middle of it. What is that all about? I'm right under the ye, uh, right under the U, basically. W what does that mean? What means these dots? <laughs> it's like, what means these stones, you know? Well, a dot in the middle of a consonant can either do two things, okay? Can you then harden a, a letter, like the bet, right? Like that. Or it can double a consonant. It could reduplicate the letter. In, in, in Greek, you got reduplication also in the perfect tense, okay? Even in, in, me, in me verbs, you got reduplication, you know? They just use, uh, sometimes they use, uh, what they use, they use a, a, a breathing marker to reduplicate, you know, it's kind of strange for the me verbs, you understand what I mean? But you have it like in Tetelestai, the debt have, has been paid in full. Jesus said that in verse 30 of chapter 19 of John's gospel, the debt has been paid, it, it has been finished. It, ha it has been finished. So the towel reduplicated into another towel. Okay. Now, um, this, you don't see the reduplication, though. You just see the dot in the middle of the belly, and you know that there's a rule, okay, that has to do with specific letters being able to take this dot, this, 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 this uh, doubling doggish, okay? So there are a handful of letters that, that can reduplicate, and there are a handful of letters that can be hardened, and you have to know which one is which, Okay? Like, for example, the yod can reduplicate. We already saw that. And on another study, I think. I don't know if we saw it today. Okay? You understand? The noon can be reduplicated. The mem can be reduplicated. That's just the deal. So what do you do in that situation? Well, I mean, okay, so you it's like mathematics for me. So what you do, the second m reduplicated into two m's or two mems, you borrow one of those mems and use it for the first syllable. And you say meme. That's all. You just borrow. It's just like math. So for me, anyway, that's, that's how it's easy for me to remember. The second mem reduplicates, okay. You don't need it there. You know, just like Costello said in, in, in that fiasco, you know, like uh, 13 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13 is, 
and whatever seven times is twenty eight, <laughs> you know, or and he, and he uses it in division, and so okay, let me borrow that two that I gave you, you know, <laughs> you know, so you you use the mem, okay, uh, that reduplicate it with the first syllable over here in this situation, okay, so it's meme, and then you keep the the m like it is in the second syllable, uh, and um, and there's a there's an e class underneath that. I wish I could just enlarge the print. I I can. Oh, goody. Just like Herman Monster used to say. Is that what I'm saying? Um, so the me underneath the, the mem is an upside down triangle set of dots. That's called say goal. It's an E class. Okay. So when you see an upside down triangle set of dots, it's a cluster of grapes in Hebrew like that. It's just an E class like in the word get. So me, me. But the difficult thing is there's another consonant that we duplicated also. So what do you do in that situation? Remember what you did with the first. You let the first syllable have the the, the mem that they reduplicated. So you take the noon and the n is right under the f, and there's a dot on and the dot in the middle of it. So you know that that reduplicated into two n's or two noons, right? So you borrow one of those noons and and, and put it with the syllable with the second syllable. So men. But I don't pronounce it like that, you know. I say meme menu. I I, I cheat. Okay, I'm not gonna say meme men no. I mean, you know, it's just it doesn't roll. You know, is that what I'm saying? And then you keep the um, and then you keep the word for us no, which means us in Hebrew. You keep it intact. You 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 use uh, the last uh, noon or the last n to go along with the last syllable. There's three syllables here. Meme. Men no, and then uh, no means us in Hebrew. Now, underneath the O and and the word of, you have a wow or a vav. Sometimes it's called wow in biblical Greek. I mean, biblical Hebrew is wow, you know, like that. It was it was a w, w sounding letter, but some people pronounce it like a v sounding letter vav, you know. So um, no means us in Hebrew, and that's where the us is coming from. It's coming from the word. The word that's that's tagged um, in the last portion of this word, nu, which means us in Hebrew, just like uh, who means he in Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? Nu means us in Hebrew. Now to put everything down again in this miniature form, we already saw Elohim, that is plural. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't El, by the way. It could have said Behreshit bara El. And on and on and on it goes. It doesn't say that though. It's not in a singular. Could have been in a singular. You find a singular recorded of, of for God, El. Okay, uh, I think that's Aleph with the Sede and then uh, the Lamed. You understand what I'm saying? You find it one. You find it. You find it one time. You find it one time in Psalm 102. The Tetragrammaton is found like ten times there, or nine times. Huh? I mean, so you find you find it, but it's not here. Okay. That's just a deal. And don't give me, oh, well, you know, Elohim can mean the false gods. Yeah, I don't know. That's just like Taos can mean. But the thing with, with uh, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, is that Satan has a genitive attached to him. He has a, he has a tag attached to him. You know, it's, it's right straight from the supermarket. You understand know what I'm saying? The God of this age. You see? The God of this age, he has that stuck on his leg. You understand know what I'm saying? The God of this uh, of this age, he has, he has, you know what it is? It's called the genitive of time. It's attached to Satan. He's a, he's a limited God, a God by the way, small g. You understand what I'm saying? It's called the genitive of time. You know, you have the genitive of time, the genitive of place, the, gen the genitive of uh, the adverbial genitive, the the the, I mean, a genitive of um of uh, opposition the. Partitive genitive, the genitive of a relationship, the genitive of this, the genitive of that. You guys, the, 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 the genitive case is the richest of all the cases. You know, it can go on and on and on. You understand know what I'm saying? Genitive of a possession, genitive of a description. I mean, you know. But that's, that's Greek. Let's get back into Hebrew. You know? Well, let's get back into Greek. <laughs> Satan is limited. He's a limited God. So there's a genitive of time. The, the God of this age is describing what kind of a God he is. Is that what I'm saying? It's just a deal. 
right? That's just, so yeah. So so far you have um, Elohim being in the plural. You have um, naase, which means uh, let us make. Okay, is actually a subjunctive in the Greek Septuagint. The Omega is pointing that out. Uh, and uh, and the us is in the primary act of personal ending men, which is part of the master uh, personal ending uh, chart. Primary act of personal ending men. And, and the same description, the same uh, word and the uh, same construction is found and recorded in Mark chapter 9 around verse 5. Okay, when Peter said, let us make three tabernacles, one for one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And then the other gospel, I think, says he didn't even know what he was talking about. You understand what I'm saying? That's the Pope for you. You understand what I'm saying? All right, that's just it. So let's go to chapter 11 now. So that's what we here come. Okay, let us go down and mix up, in Hebrew it says, uh, confuse, okay, their language, okay, so they will not understand each other. You see? God doesn't like towers too much, you know, so you have to be careful with the watchtower, you understand know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, he doesn't like towers for some reason or another. I mean, it's, just, it's just a lot of pride involved in towers, you know, so some of them, not all. Come, let us go down. Now, let's check that out. What's that? Well, let's see. Let us go down is actually neredat. Neredat. You have the noon again. I'm right under the N and down. You have the, that's, an, that's, an, that's an N sounding letter, noon. And then you have, let me, let me blow it up a little bit here. Let me see what happened here. Ugh. Where, where was I at now? Let me see. Where was I now? Huh? I have to find it again. Okay, this is uh, chapter 6. So it's going to be before that. Uh, it's just a deal. This is it right here. This is it recorded. Let me see if I can enlarge the print. The print. Let me see. Oh, I can't do it. Let me see. In our image, I didn't do that. I have to do that also. You know that. Let me see. Uh, eleven. Okay, eleven. I can't. I can't enlarge it though. Okay, now now I can. Let me see. I can't anymore though. That's it though, guys. Let us go down. Okay, so what is it? Okay, I'm at the top. Okay, let's put the hero all the way to the top. Okay. Remember, you read from right to left. Now, the telephone-looking thingy, that's an N in Hebrew, okay? It's like a handle in the telephone. But there are, um, you know, these shapes do depict things, okay? So I'm just telling you what, it, what can help you, you know, not what it actually means, you know? That's a noon. Now, there's, a, there's, there's dots underneath it. It's like side-by-side -side dots, um, horizontal dots. Okay, that's, that's called sede. That's an E class, like in the word they. So just just picture in your mind, a, you know, you're looking from a skyscraper and you're looking below at two dots that are people walking side by side and they are walking side by side like that. That's how I remembered it. I just put the word they in it so I could remember uh, the Hebrew, you know, dots. But that's ne. And then you have the resh. Okay, let me bring it down a little bit. No, okay. Then you have the resh is right above the A. The office, office side looking R in Hebrew. But you have a schwa there. Um, making a sound. That's making a sound though. Uh, so. Um, nere. Nere. Okay. And then the other syllable has to do with a dalet. That looks like the resh though. Okay. Uh, so you have two letters that look like each other. The thing with the Hebrew R is rounded off to the upper right-hand side, and the Dalit or the D is not rounded off. It protrudes outwardly a little bit. That's the difference between the R and the D in Hebrew, the Resh and, uh, and the Dalit. Okay, now uh, there's a T-looking looking thingy underneath it. That's an A-class like in the word Father. Okay, sometimes it's an O-class, but most, like, most likely it's an A-class when you're looking at it. 
And then there's a silent hey or an H, and that just caps off the, the Hebrew word. All right, so nereda. Okay, let us go down. Okay, nereda. Let us go down. Okay. Now, uh, the Hebrew word, okay, and I can't, I mean, let me move this. Uh, let me see if I could get it again. This is a pain, this thing, you know, it keeps on moving on me, you know. In our image, let's see. Uh, for a second here, I think. Uh, this is it right here. And uh, the actual lexical form is actually, okay, yarad. Yarad. Uh, actually, yarad. Actually, it uh, means to descend, if, if, if I'm not mistaken. I can't poke the bear now, but it has to do something with descension. That's going down. You understand? Yarad. And in English, it's spelled out right here. Anyway, Y-A-R-A-D. But you have a yod and a kamet, and then a resh and a pathach, and then the dalit after that. So you have the consonants are yod, resh, dalit, or y, r, d, and the vowel points underneath it are a set of a classes. The two a classes in Hebrew: the kamet that looks like a t, like a, like in the word for father, and the a class like in the word hat is is. Um, is uh, pathak here it looks like a minus sign on your calculator? Okay, all right, let's go to the other one. Record it, Isaiah. This time, well, Isaiah chapter 6 says something like this Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom this is an NIV, who shall ascend? Okay. And who will go for us? No, you can't put angels in there. I mean, they're not doing the angels bidding. The angels are ministering servants. They sent a minister. We're not doing anything for the angels. <laughs> We're doing them a favor by leaving the Bible open, though, so they can look at these things. You understand what I'm saying? We don't, we don't, we don't go for the angels. Like you know, when the apostle Paul went to Ephesus, he was he wasn't going for Michael. You understand what I'm saying? By the way, um, you know that famous uh, Hebrew word malach, which means uh, messenger primarily, and can be translated into angel. Well, in the book of Ephesim, which is in Hebrew Ephesus, okay, Ephesians actually, if it's in the plural, Ephesim, I believe. The Eim, that goes to Eim again. Um, the Apostle Paul in chapter 1, verse 1, calls him calls himself Malach, actually. Malach, messenger. He calls himself Malach there in, in uh, which one? Well, the, the Hebrew Bible uh, found and recorded in, uh, um, I believe, eight, 1817 has it there. Translated from the Texas Receptus by Gigi Collier and T. Frey. You know what I'm saying? F R E Y. I think by the London Jew Society, I think. I think that's what it is. And in the same Bible, it has Jesus recording saying, Ech, yech, for himself. Nobody can say, Ech, yech, for himself, except for Yahweh. You understand what I'm saying? That's his name. And Yahweh is his memorial name. Don't forget about that. Nobody can say, Ech, yech, that Jesus did in the 1817 and 1880 Hebrew New Testaments. And that's just the deal. You can get one of them on Amazon.com, by the way. It's the 1817 edition. Well, who will go for us? Now, what's that in, in, in Hebrew? It's easy. It's very easy. For us is actually lanu. Now, remember that nu means us in Hebrew. We found it in mim menu. Nu means us in Hebrew. Okay? So just remember that. Now, nu is found and recorded at the end of this Hebrew what? But it says over here, and let me see if I could just blow it up a little bit. Ah, right, there it goes again. There it goes again. Let me see. Um... This is Genesis 1, though. Let's see what I can do here. Um, let me see. Yeah, I think it's this one, right? It should be this one, no? No. According. Let me see. How about this one? This one right here. Because I can't see it. It's hard. 
It's hard to see. Let me see. Ah, uh, it's this one. Okay, for us. Uh, let me see if I could just... Uh, okay, there you go. Goodness gracious. All right. Now, underneath the word for us is, is where I want you to concentrate. Okay? And the R and four. But the S first and the word us. The big, big letter, the biggest letter in the Hebrew alphabet, basically, I, I believe, when it, having to do with going over the top line, the, that's a Lamed, that's an L. It's found in Elohim, the word Elohim. That's an L in Hebrew, Lamed. Now, underneath, you have two things. You have an accent marker that looks like an arrow, right? Forget about that for now. You have a T-looking thingy, and I already said what that was. That's an A-class, like in the word Father. So just say La, that's all. Hebrew is just as easy as that. You sound off the consonant if it makes a, a sound, and then um, and then you you sound off what's what's the vowel that has to do with it. And in this in this in this instance, um, the vowel is underneath it, so you just say la. Okay. If there's a dot over it to the left hand side as an O class, you just say lo. You see. It's just as simple as that. Just like in the word Elohim. Um, so, so far, La. Now, the like the second syllable is just Nu. Because you have a Nun. It doesn't have anything around it or nothing like that, meaning to go along with it. So, just N, you know, it's an N in Hebrew. It's right under the U and us. But there's a vowel. There's a wow or vowel class. A vowel. Uh, a consonant acting like a vowel. With a dot in the middle, well, well, that's you know that dot in the middle of it is not for reduplication. It's not for hardening. It's it's a vowel. It's a U class. It's a U class. You just have to know which which letters can the U class take that that U class. You understand? So the dot in the middle of the last consonant there that's acting like a vowel, okay, is a U class, and that's just a deal. So lanu, lanu. Is it's as easy as that? Lanu. Lanu, Lanu, Lanu. You understand? So that's just the deal. Well, that's it for now. And I, I did these posters, you know, and I hope you guys will enjoy them. Uh, they look very nice. Um, I did it in Corel Video Studio by using Boris Graffiti. And I, I got metallic letters and stuff like that, just in case you have Corel. You have Lanu over here, but the 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 vowels wasn't really couldn't really write underneath in the middle of of the bottom portion of the consonant. So I mean, you know, sorry about that. But these are nice pictures. I did it myself. I should have put my name, but you know, you know, what are you gonna do? And then over here you have Nereda, uh, um, but I mean, you know. Some things are missing from it and stuff like that, but it's it's really really quite beautiful to look at when you're looking at a sideways angle of it. And this is meme menu without the doubling doggish in the middle of the second mem, but that's okay anyway. It's just, I did the best I could. And then the I class is not directly in the middle of the first mem underneath the first mem, so I mean it's almost to the side, almost to the middle. But what are you gonna do? And then you got me over there. This is Angelo Quinones giving glory, total glory to the God of Israel. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And that means that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were very much alive at the time that Jesus said those words. Please subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up. And please leave a comment on the screen. And guess what? My baby's still sleeping. So she's a special child, and her name is Anna Devane. And so that's good that she's still sleeping. So maybe I can get some sleep. That's just the deal. Before I don't get any sleep later on <laughs> you what I'm saying? so again please subscribe to my channel please give me a thumbs up and please leave a comment on the screen of what you want to see in the future okay thank you bye okay i want to add an appendix to the study that i just made on the plural pronouns for god in the bible in genesis proving okay that there is a plurality within the godhead even in, in this early stage of uh, Moshe's writing, or Moses's writing, you understand what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> now the word for in our image, <clears throat> okay, we already saw Naase Adam. Okay, let us make man. 
but the other pronoun is nu, okay, in Hebrew here, you know, in our, our is nu, this tags right in the end of the Hebrew word, let me just enlarge the print a little bit, I hope, I hope I can, always having, always have problems with it, hmm. Hmm, I can't, but anyway, let me leave it the way it is, now, um, I'm under the word image, okay? So we have a Beit Sade, and we have a Lamed, we have a Mem, a Nun, and a Wow, okay, with vowel classes underneath them, basically, and one to the side. One hardening dogish, an accent marker, or whatever the case may be, okay? So you have a B, a TS letter, a L sounding letter, an M sounding letter, a uh, N sounding letter, like in the word Nilda, and name, and a wow, sound, a W sounding letter, wow. The first um, pronunciation here it's, is, has to do with a B. B. Now it's hard because there's a dot in the middle of it. I'm right under the E in image, and that's a bit, okay? That has to do with a house in Hebrew. Sort of like a genitive, if you will. You understand what I'm saying? Bet. Okay, that's a B. That could be a B or a V in Hebrew. Like in the modern word, you're, you're welcome. Bebakasha. I think that's you're welcome. Bebakasha. The bet is sounding like two different things in that Hebrew word. Getting back to the Bible over here, however, this bet is here. It has a dot in the middle, so it's be, not v. Uh, then you have a... Sh you have a a schwa underneath it. Okay. So, it's sort of a peculiar sound. You just make a uh, be. Okay. And then uh, there's a T, there's a Y looking letter uh, in Hebrew underneath the G. And that's sade. That's actually a TS, that's, that's a TS sounding letter, like in the word sports. Okay. Now, there's two versions of this. One, the other version goes to the last part of a, a, of a Hebrew word, like in the word edits, which means of. It looks like a Y. It's not a Y. It's a T-S sounding letter. What an A-class underneath it, though. This A-class is like in the, it sounds like a, uh, uh, like in the word hat. Okay, so you have the, the bet with a schwa underneath it, a sade or T-S letter with a A-class underneath it, and then that's just the deal. Then after that, you have the Lamed, okay, with the Shua, the Lamed. Now the the TS and the L, or the Sade and the Lamed, are together as one syllable. Okay? You say, um, if you want, Betzal. Betzal. And then you have a Mem, Okay, after that, it's right under, basically under the the I and image, um, but al almost under also the R as well. So it's like a half a M. Just picture the the Hebrew M looking like a half a M, if you will. And then there's a there's two set of dots underneath it. That's set A. That's the E class, like in the word day. Okay. Uh, so, me. And then you have the word nu there, okay? Appended to the last portion of the uh, Hebrew word. You have the nun, okay, with nothing under it or over it or whatever. But on the side of it, you have a vowel. You have wow acting like a vowel with a U class. Okay, that dot in in the right hand, in the left hand uh, portion of the letter is a U class. Okay, so it's actually batsal menu. It's menu. And so that's a new means us in Hebrew. So that's um, in our image. It's menu. Now let's look at the other um, one. Okay. Okay, so let's look at the other pronouns for, for God. In our image, we already looked at that. Okay. According to our. According to our. and According to our. Let's see. According to our, 
No, let's see what's that. According to our, okay, so you have new there as well. But you have um, keyed, keyed, mu, keyed, says keyed, mu, tenu, keyed, mu, tenu. Okay. Now remember that nu means us in Hebrew. So we have nu here, nu in the image word, and then mi menu, and then lanu. So actually four of the six actually has nus, okay, very starkly at the end of the Hebrew word. Six of the, uh, four of the six uh, pro, uh, plural pronouns for God has nu uh, at the end of, of the end of them. Okay, so um, according, will be kata in the Greek Septuagint, according to our, okay, according to our, according to our likeness, it says over here, and again, that's kid mu tenu, kid mu tenu, that's spell out cough, can okay, you see if I can enlarge that? No, I can't. That's spelled out cough with the hardening dogish. So that's the k. Okay. And then, um, yeah, the I class underneath it. So you have ki or ke. And then you have the dalit with the schwa. So it's not a straight jacket of rule, but when that happens, okay, you, you that's, a, that's one, that's, that's all part of one of the same syllable, kid. Okay, so the dalit is the D in, uh, in Hebrew, like in the word dabar, which means what? John 1 1. Found twice there, as a matter of fact, though. Behreshir hayah dabar, vaha dabar hayahim ha Elohim, vaalohim hayah dabar. Actually, it's found uh, three times. <laughs> Kid. And then you have the mem underneath the uh, N in likeness. And then after that, you have the wow acting like a vowel with the U class. Uh, okay. So you have mu. And then you have a tau on, or a T underneath the K as the last letter of the, of the 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And then you have set A underneath that two set of dots side by side. That's an E class like in the word they. So te, like in the word chen, or grace, I believe, in Zechariah, the spirit of grace. Getting back to this, then you have uh, underneath the L, basically, you have a noon, okay, with nothing around it. But then you have um, in and of itself. But then you have a wow with a U class. Now the nu and the uh, and the uh, wow with, it, with the U class is, is that's one word, us, all across us or our. Okay? So that's just the deal. So nu means us in Hebrew. So that's just the deal. So we have over here again, kid mu tenu for according to our image. And again, you have in our image, you have batsal menu. Batsal menu and remember that us means nu means us in hebrew okay this is angelo quinon is giving glory to the god of israel please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and please give me a thumbs up leave your comment on the screen thank you for joining me in this appendix